um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizing committee, CSA Asia Pacific, um, especially Hot Seward and also Professor Shai Qureshi, uh, allow me to be here to sharing the uh, experience of using um, this device. So hope it will be useful for you guys. So this is my uh, disclosure. So if um, you um, talk about the device closure for the uh, congenital heart defect, so this is one of the things that may be useful because uh, as you can see that the design is uh, double disc design and that's very really a brilliant idea of having two hubs. One would be uh, on this side which is supposed to be the high pressure side and also the other side is also another hub which is supposed to be the low pressure side. So it's kind of nice to know why mesh as you can see. Um, and if the device is larger, they will put uh, some patches in. Larger means is if anything that bigger than eight millimeter, sorry, nine millimeter, nine seven, they will put the patch in. So uh, with that kind of thing, it's like the hybrid between the PDA type device, I mean ADO one, plus another this on the other side. So um, potential site uh, for MFO, um, you can use it um, obviously. Uh, because it's multifunctional, as they say. So you can use for the VSD, nuclear fistula, either pulmonary or horary fistula, or definitely for the PDA or some kind of MAPCUS. So that's kind of potential side, definitely. It could be used for other things, something like Parabavali, maybe. I haven't tried that. Um, normally, in general, you can, you can use that, but you need to oversize a bit. A bit mean depends on the anatomy, but likely to be like two to four millimeter larger than the defect diameter. And just to show you some example of the of using this device in a quite kind kind of um, challenging situation. This is uh, one of the cases that we did probably about two or three years back. Uh, that was an um, eight months old baby, um, six kilo. Uh, that that time, fortunately, the patient got recurrent pneumonia. Uh, so the surgeon is quite reluctant to to bring the patient into the bypass to treat the heart failure. I mean, by closing the defect. Uh, as you can see, the hole is quite big, about six to eight millimeter <clears throat> from the echo. And from angio, it's obviously very huge um, defect and also huge shine. I think that time um, history is around. Uh, wow, we did the case. Um, yeah, so the measurement is about six millimeter. So as you can see that uh, with using the um, five branch molding sheath, which is quite um, you know usable for a small child, uh, retrogradely, um, you can pass the defect from the IVC through the RV and then the VSD and then getting everything onto the descending aorta. And with that kind of approach, we can use uh, the device to deploy into that position of the VSD. Uh, it's not that easy, I would say, because of the stiffness of this uh, system, but at least you can sh uh, see that it's uh, quite nicely sitting in between the defect. And then after we release, uh, it looks very nicely sitting without uh, disturbances of the aortic valve and also that shunt is completely disappear uh, almost immediate after the procedure. So that's kind of challenging that um, we had. Also the thing that um, maybe is not applicable in, in most part of the world, but at least in Thailand, when you deal with the VSD, the um, PM VSD with LV to RA shunt, that run the risk of the uh, so-called the endocarditis. And also in this particular case, you can see that the heart is still big. So it means that for some reason, the, sun, the shunt is not that small. So with that case, uh, we decided to put the device in because we considering of this uh, LV to RA shunt. But uh, with this kind of uh, shunt from the VSD to the right atrium, um, so we decided to do it retrogradely in order to at least just to see um, on the table whether it can be abolished uh, the uh, TR or not. And as you can see, we go retrogradely from the <clears throat> aorta and then VSD and then to the RV and we deploy from the, RVS, uh, from the right ventricle using that MFO and immediate after the procedure, the TR is completely disappeared. So that's the thing that are very useful also using this double disc device. Or when you deal with the challenging situation of the outlet VSD in terms of the stability of the device and also the touching of the uh, aortic valve. And as you can see here with this kind of thing, um, um, thanks for uh, Spin Park that um, allowed me to present her case. But just to show you that how does the device sitting and how does it dancing with the uh, aortic valve because this is soft device. So uh, with that, um, it allows you to uh, avoid the complication, especially for the aortic valve impingement. Um, so how about the chorifistula? 
just to share some of you the patient that we did. That was a patient we did probably during CSIAP in 2017 with Nageshwar. Um, so as you can see here is quite huge, uh, tortuous um, core fistula from the left, left core artery and completely the other way around back to the, the right atrium as you can see from this angio. Um, so with that, we just um, put the device in by crossing the defect, I mean from the aorta and then get into the SVC, then we snare it and then we uh, just uh, rather gladly um, advancing the sheath and then with the Y inside, so we just recheck the anatomy again and we decide to put the device in around here. So here's the, uh, um, the M4 device advancing into the uh, landing zone and here's a final result. And as you can see that the device is adapt very nicely into the anatomy um, uh, with this kind of um, core fistula. Or just recently we did uh, have one patient with right core artery or right atrial fistula like as you can see here. Again it's quite elongated uh, and very tortuous and here you can see that this too is quite uh, uh, narrowing but in the middle, I mean, uh, in more distal, it looks very dilated, while here is also very tortuous. So with that kind of anatomy, uh, reducing uh, retrograde, uh, well, actually, just to make a story short, uh, we pass one of the catheter inside, but still we can see another hole there, so that's why we need to recross again with the guide wire, and then we just leave uh, the previous catheter inside while we put another catheter into another, another area of the uh, fistula exit. And then we eventually implant the MFO device onto that area. And as you can see, even if it's so elongated here, but the device is nicely sitting and hanging around that area. Uh, if you can notice, this one is completely expanded, it means it's in the right atrium. So with that, uh, you can see that uh, all the defects, I mean the shunt, is completely abolished with this kind of uh, techniques. So how about the outcome? Um, we have limited using this device in our country because uh, most of the cases we use as a compassionate ground. Um, so we do have a, a few experience actually. But uh, just to share with you maybe for the VSD, uh, so we use about 5% of the device for closure of the VSD. And here is, uh, we can use this device uh, in tubular type, anatomical type or even conical type, but window type, uh, we didn't do it yet. Well, maybe because of the, of the number of the cases, quite limited, or maybe because it may be a little bit longer for this kind of short uh, window um, area. So no complication related to that device. And uh, for the early um, global clinical outcomes, just uh, by personal uh, contact with the company just recently, so they uh, stated that uh, until now about 700 cases implanted by using this MFO, including European countries, South America, Middle East, Africa, and also uh, Asia, India, definitely, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, Dr. Budi will share some experience of using his, this device in his country, and definitely Thailand. So complete occlusion rate is quite nice, uh, occur, as you can see, immediately is about 60%, but almost 100% at one month. And hard block, hopefully, will be zero keeping. Uh, hemolysis, not yet. Uh, Neoaortic valve regurgitation is starting from zero up to about 3%. Uh, TR is starting from zero up to 19%. Uh, both, most of them are all mild. So hopefully, this will be okay for, uh, you know, um, uh, using this uh, in variety of uh, uh, defect. And it's C-marked in, in March last year. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoy that um, this device is actually a sleek and flexible device. It could be applicable for babies and small children, definitely. Uh, it can be applied in different indications and can be deployed either uh, anti-grade or retrograde approach. And it's torrential shunt, definitely, because of that soft net and also a little bit uh, small size in, in comparison to uh, you know the defect. If you use this for the big shunt, be careful because you may get uh, an issue of the uh, embolization or unsta unstable of the vibe position. Um, but in reasonable initial clinical data collection, uh, and hopefully we can have the uh, assessment comprehensively for the outcome in the near future. Thank you very much.